Notes on the origin of my interest in the subterranean. An architectural feature peculiar to the place I was raised is the Pittsburgh toilet, the Pittsburgh potty. In the basement, tucked in a corner, or by a wash basin sink, bounded by no walls, no privacy. During the regional period of most strenuous industrial exertion, the worker would enter the house through the chasm of the exterior man door to enter through the basement. It was common then, or so I've been told, for the air to be so thick with smoke that a white shirt could be coated black in the course of a day. It was important then to wash away the residue of a day's labor before entering the hygienic, domestic, family space. Ritual daily excretions all happened below street level, parallel to the foundation of the house, most Pittsburgh houses being built in the hillsides, split level constructions. The shape of local work and life have changed, but the underground commode remains, embedded in the pipes reaching up from uneven cement floors. Nowadays, when it rains too hard, or the aged lead and terracotta matrix of sewer lines reach capacity, the basement toilet is often the place from which all the raw sewage reemerges. I think the first time I saw sex in person was through a glass block basement window. When I was maybe eight years old, walking home from playing chicken with some other kids down by the railroad tracks, smash pennies in our pockets. We were making our way through a wooded lot in twilight when we saw the winking light from afar, something about it suggesting pink and moving flesh. I'm not sure who saw it first, or even if a word was spoken between us, but very quickly, then all at once, we were crouching in the rhododendron, peering into the low window, trying to look, but also not be caught looking. They were a middle-aged couple, and the glass was partly frosted, dinged up and coated with dirt and mulch. It wasn't quite erotic. Their movements performed in dutiful repetition. The excitement, or I think what drew us in, was the discovery, the encounter, a field of vision that penetrated the ground beneath our feet and into something we weren't supposed to see. I can't quite say exactly the impact that this had upon my young mind, but I do often think about the way my experience with subterranean space has recalled the circumstances of that primal scene. I lost my virginity in a high wall grotto and performed my adolescent assignations in the chapel cellar of my parochial school. Once, while making a vampire movie with my best friend in high school, Tony Giancola, we found a trucker porn magazine with a lurid centerfold displayed between the colorful bars of a playground jungle gym. Intrigued and horrified, we turned its sticky, grotesque, and violent pages at a distance with a long tree branch. We decided between ourselves that the magazine had probably been left there by some local pervert for plain children to find, and took it upon ourselves to bury it in a hole we dug nearby in an empty lot, ushering it into a kind of buried nuclear containment. Now, I spent a lot of time digging doing a sort of naive archaeology, searching for arrowheads, marbles, and bones, digging post holes for fence lines, tilling over winter rye, digging ditches for day labor. To quote Lana Del Rey, quoting Goodfellas, the fuck cares, I'll dig the fucking hole. I don't give a fuck. What is it, the first hole I dug? Not the first time I've dug a hole. The whole country is saturated with holes. Tur tunnels, caverns, underground streams, mines, graves, buried lines, pipes, and conduit wires. The Pennsylvania mine map atlas shows the whole state is Swiss cheese, chambers rambling on for miles beneath verdant fields, rocky hills, quiet little towns, big cities, a monumental network infrastructure hidden from view. The problem then is infrastructure failure when the ground opens back up and the substructure is revealed in the proliferation of sinkholes, potholes, collapsing roads, clogged lines, uprooted trees, and crumbling foundations. We still remember up where I'm from the famous sinkhole bus incident when a Port Authority bus was swallowed up in downtown Pittsburgh. Among the tall buildings in a busy thoroughfare, the street collapsed beneath the back wheels of the vehicle, the bus falling beneath street level and tilting up at 45 degrees, almost monolithic. Burial is temporary, and with time, the return of the press. Okay. Scene. Cool. All right. I'm gonna take a photo now.